On a lonely planet, slowly spinning its way to damnation, amid the incompetence and unpreparedness of lesser space programs, one team stands resilient against the herds, putting their lives on the line to aid those who were previously unaware of the quick save option. Yes, it's the incredible adventures of Jebediah and his crack team of Kerbinauts. They are the Blunderbirds. Saving the Kerbin race, one stranded explorer at a time. Hello everyone and welcome to uh, another episode of the Blunderbirds in which we will be rescuing uh, Ral Krell Eleven's uh, Kerbals from the surface, or the base I should say, of the Drez Canyon. Um, although upon loading the quick save, I noticed he has uh, 1500 meters per second of Delta V, so he probably actually has enough to get home, but oh dear, what is this I have done? <laughs> I, um, I, I accidentally throttled up the ship, disabled SAS, and then pressed the spacebar, so... Well, hey, at least, at least we can justify this mission. Actually, we did end up... Well, we, we can cross the bridge as we get there in terms of why this mission ended up becoming a somewhat, somewhat of a necessity, but we'll... Like I say, we'll, get, we'll cross that bridge as we get there. Here is uh, the Dresda Bird. What are we on now? Like Blunderbird 10? Is that? Maybe it is Blunderbird 10. But this is a rather special episode of the Blunderbirds, regardless, because... Drez is the final planet of the solar system that we have yet to rescue a Kerbal from. Um, we've rescued Kerbals from every planet and a couple of moons. Uh, the Mun, Minmus, and uh, Laith, and Tylo. So, well, have we done? We've done the Mohol, we've done Eve, we've done... We haven't done Kerbin technically, so maybe that's something we need to do in the Blunderbirds at some point. Uh, but we've done the Mun, which is the Kerbin system, and Minmus, so... I know we need to finish off the Kerbin system. We've also done Juna, not Ike, but we're talking about planets here. Uh, Drez now from this video, and then we've done Jewel or its moons, I guess, Lath and Tylo, uh, and then we don't need to do. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this series as a series now. I mean, I started it when I started it. I had a couple of places I wanted to rescue Kerbals from. Tylo and Eve were the main ones because those those two places are without a doubt, the hardest places in the solar system to do missions to. Laith isn't far off, and I wanted to do something to Laith. And then after that, kind of anywhere and everywhere, really, uh, those were the those are the hard places. In the back of my mind, though, I wanted to do a Mohol rescue, and I was very... I, I was kind of sceptical that someone would actually end up stranding a Kerbal at the bottom of the Mohol, but hey, someone did, so we managed to do a Mohol rescue. And the guy actually managed to just leave Je Jev on his own with no monopellant either, so that made it extra hard, which made it... An especially fun uh, topic for that video. And uh, the other place was the Drez Canyon, but I pretty much wagered that nobody would be uh, stranding a Kerbal in the Drez Canyon, much less post it on Reddit. But hey, I am very happy to be proved wrong, as I as I have been as I have been with this episode here. So we're going to be doing an Apollo-style mission to Drez um, in, as part of the rescue, namely because Apollo-style missions are just cooler than direct ascent. Uh, and also because I did an Apollo Star mission in the last episode of Blunderbirds, and it went down pretty well. People liked the episode a lot more than um, a lot. Well, none of my videos have been getting the same kind of views they used to after the whole. First of all, there was the N word shenanigans with PewDiePie, and then there was uh, Logan Paul filming, you know, a corpse in the forest. None of uh, the backlash of this is that YouTube channels, especially gaming channels, it seems, have not done very well as a consequence. But uh, the Elu video last week did pretty well. Uh, considering the circumstances. So maybe maybe you guys want Apollo. I mean you guys know what you want more than I know what you want. So I'm just I'm just like the dancing monkey trying to, you know, appeal to what you want. So yes, Apollo style in that it's a kind of central transfer stage with no so the main command module has its own sort of stage, but it doesn't drop any additional tanks. And then we have a separate lander that goes down to the surface of Drez and then redocks back at the mothership, but there were twists and turns throughout this journey. Even I Ladies and gentlemen, we're skeptical that we would actually ultimately pull this off. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll, but like I say, we'll, you'll see that as it happens. But yes, the, one of the reasons I said earlier that uh, I was skeptical that anyone would be stranding Kerbals in the Drez Canyon uh, and posting it on Reddit. The reason for this is the age-old meme of. By the way, I haven't really been talking about what's going on screen. I'm hoping you guys, uh, it's, you guys can sort of see what's going on. But essentially, I did a sort of raise my apoapsis to Drez's height. And then we have to do this big inclination change to get there. So I, I launched at the right transfer window. But speaking of the inclination change, that kind of links back to the what I was talking about. Why is it that people don't visit Drez? And why does this mean that Drez is boring even exist? Well, for one, it's true. It is pretty boring. It is essentially just the Mun. I mean, what it takes, um, 430 meters per second of delta V to take off from the 
dress surface, which is even less than what the Mun requires. So it's easy, it's, it's, and it's basically just boring grey rock. It looks like the Mun. The only thing it has going for it, really, in terms of geographical features and interestingness is the big canyon, which is why I wanted the Dres Canyon to be featured, because it is a pretty cool spot to visit. One of my one of my gripes with KSP is there aren't really enough sort of interesting places on planets. Like, if you land somewhere on Juna, it will look exactly the same as every other area on Juna. Whereas Dres, it's kind of cool that there's an actual big canyon that you can visit. The Mun's a little bit similar to this as well, and Eve has its moments. Um, and the Mohole, obviously, is the other major example of this. But in general, most planets are just fairly plain, flat. I mean, just like normal planets, really, bar, bar Earth. And obviously all the various exoplanets that scientists have found. Not exoplanets, you know, the Earth twins in various other solar systems. Uh, or planetary systems, because solar system is the sol- Whatever, you guys know what I'm talking about. But um, yes, Dres is very boring, and the problem is it's very hard to get to. It's very hard to get to for what it is. It takes a large amount of Delta V to get there, but not only does it take a huge amount of fuel, um, it also, it takes a lot of fuel to circularize, because obviously it's quite high, but not only this, it's at this really weird angle, so you not only, not only have you got to do a big, you know, apoapsis raising, and then periapsis raising as well, it has, um, it has a big inclination thing as well, so you've got to do an inclination change as well, so when it comes to plotting a course for it, it is rather challenging. Anyway, at this point, I remember, as I said at the beginning of this video, that we ended up, uh, needing to do this rescue mission, even though the stranded lander could get back on its own steam. Because our dear friend Ralkral11 on Reddit, uh, he forgot- he left this ship in orbit for reasons that are only clear to him. Something he wrote in the comments that I included at the beginning of this video, as I do for all blunderbirds, is that he wanted to, um, bring Bill to Drez for some reason, which is- as I said, Drez is a pretty boring planet, there's not a many compelling reasons to come here, especially if he's already got a Kerbal in the canyon, which is the only notable Location on the surface, but regardless he brought Bill here and Bill did not have enough fuel to get back to Kerbin And even if he did he didn't have the means to get back to Kerbin surface So we can rescue Bill and then we can come down to the canyon and rescue Valentina Kerman, but My dear viewers the more astute among you may have noticed that my sh in my in my myopia I um, I brought a command pod that only seats three Kerbals. I mean the ship itself can seat seven Kerbals. Uh, we've got that kind of um, hitchhiker storage compo compartment, which I kind of like including on interplanetary mes missions, at least in my videos as of late, because I kind of feel it's a bit ridiculous to sort of bring that, just that one Apollo-style command pod. Is it the Mark One? Is it the Mark Two? I've always just called it the Apollo-style command pod. Anyway, we can just plant off like... By the way, we've landed in the Dres Canyon. Should I have... I feel like I maybe should have narrated that, but I mean... Like I said, Dres only needs about 430 meters per second of fuel to take off and land on, so it's not exactly a, a very challenging feat. Uh, especially when you've got the actual visual, you know, scale of the canyon to help guide yourself down. But regardless, as I was saying, as I was saying, the Apollo-style command pod that we brought with us only has crew capacity for three Kerbals. And I, for some reason, brought two Kerbals with us. Well, it's because I wanted it to be like Apollo Star, where we leave at least one Kerbal in orbit. Send Jebediah down to the surface to pick up Valentina, and then we always have a Kerbal manning the mothership in orbit. But we now have four Kerbals in our crew, and the actual, you know, Kerbin descent stage of the craft is in the bit with parachutes and the heat shield. Well, that only has capacity for four. Suppose <laughs> it only has capacity for three, and we need it to have capacity for four. Well, there we go. There goes me screwing up that dramatic sentence. So, what are we to do? What are we to do? Well, you will see, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, um, it took a bit of creativity. Like, literally, at this point, I was like, oh, for God's sake, like, sorry, for for um, for goodness sake, this, this is a Christian channel, thank you. Um, so, for goodness sake, we... I'm gonna have to, I might have to redo the mission here, but I persisted because I'm currently recording this uh, about, well, I anticipate uh, this video will go live in a couple of hours, so I really didn't have time to go back. If I wanted this video to be done for Friday uh, and have the music video done as well, do it. I don't even know if I'm gonna have time to do the music video, but hopefully, now that I'm saying this as commentary, I'm now basically forcing Future Matt to make the music video, so sorry, me, but anyway. Uh, that all will be done, hopefully, to be uploaded in a couple of hours. It's going to be a real, it's going to be a real fun few hours whilst I get all this scrambled together. But yes, I was running out of time. I didn't really want to, I didn't want to push this video back to Saturday because 
Uh, Friday is the new Saturday on this channel. I, I've been uploading. I've been uploading videos on Friday as of late to try and combat the fact that a a lot of I've noticed a lot of Kerbal YouTubers upload on Saturdays. Uh, well, I've noticed Marcus House uploads on Saturdays and a couple of others, but he is the other YouTuber that uploads fairly frequently and not as often. Marcus, my boy, you need to come. You need to come back to the world of weekly uploads. Maybe you do, and I've just I've just not been keeping track. I like oh, the thing he's not uploaded for a while. Oh, they uploaded two days ago, and I just <laughs> it just feels like I they haven't for a while. So anyway, I'll return to Kerbin. <laughs> we made obviously we were at this big uh, eccentric inclination uh, relative to Kerbin. So what I did was I got my orbital line to pass over Kerbin's, and then we we can kind of drag another maneuver node out. And just after we pass that point, you know, the point where we intersect Kerbin's orbit and just pull on the retrograde marker until we end up getting those patched conics to swing all the way around and get ourselves a Kerbin encounter. But we're coming in at a very uh, angled trajectory, which doesn't help things. And I did, I created a maneuver node just here and it's going to take over 1600 meters per second of delta V. And as you can see from the Kerbal Engineer readouts at the top, we only have a mere 750-ish meters per second, which is nowhere near what we need. So, this is what we did. We lowered our apopsis, sorry. We lowered our periapsis to 37 kilometers. I then started burning retrograde as we hit the atmosphere and we braced ourselves for explosions. Obviously, we've got to keep the Apollo style command pod that was originally just gonna be ditched on Dres, but we need the extra, the extra seats now. So we kind of did a, a blowtorch staging sort of thing and you see, Keeping that nuclear state attached um, just ensured that we slowed down a little bit more than we would have normally. And it also acted as a bit of a shield for the, uh, the Apollo style command pod. You would think the setup that you can see on the screen at the moment is in just the Apollo command pod attached to the lander. Because the Apollo pod has the thermal heat shield, you'd think it'd be enough. But it wasn't when I tried this the first time. That was uh, That's why there was kind of a weird fade transition earlier because I had to quick load. Because originally, uh, upon re-entry, things would start getting very hot at the lander because there were a few things sticking out. As you can see, we are now <laughs> Sam's our landing legs. But uh, yeah, a few things were sticking out, it caused explosions, and that put strain on the docking port. And it ended up detaching the Apollo Star lander and losing it. But just having the nuclear stage there, just what continuously burning, also helped slow down our descent. There's our splashdown. It helped slow down our descent, but it also acted as a sort of secondary heat shield, really, because it kind of took the brunt of the re-entry forces, and it was kind of acted as a sort of sacrificial heat shield. Well, I guess the ablative shield in itself is a sacrificial re-entry shield, but you get the idea. And uh, yes, there we are. That's the end of the video. So, uh, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, and if you want to, you can donate to my Patreon, All the links to all of which are in the description. And then we can just do a nice cinematic zoom out and on screen. We have some videos. Top left is the music video version of this video. Top right is the full Blunderbirds playlist. And the bottom left was my most recent upload. And the bottom right was specially selected for you by YouTube's algorithm. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And likewise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.